Hello, my name is Mark, and I'm here to discuss about the uh, the Voice at iSpace KM model. So, see, si Max Henry Boysot, ay uh, isang British architect at management consultant kung saan siya ay naging isang uh, professor sa Strategic Management Business School sa Barcelona. Si Boyset ay uh, kilala pa tungkol sa kanyang mga ideya tungkol sa information economy, social capital at social learning, at sa tinatawag na information space o i-space. Ang Boyset KM model ay uh, base sa konsepto na ang information good ay magkaiba sa physical asset. Ang information good ay maaari nating ihelen tulad sa isang ideya na pangloob na may value o halaga at hindi nahahawakan. Samantalang ang physical asset naman ay ang physical existence o maaaring hawakan tulad ng mga machinery, mga buildings, mga tools, mga equipments, mga sasakyan at iba pa. Boyset distinguishes um, information from data by emphasizing that information is what an absorber will extract from data as a function of his or her expectations or prior knowledge. Ang ibig sabihin ay binibigyan din dito ni Boyset na ang mga information daw ay sa kung ano ang makukuha o ma-extract mo sa data base sa iyong ekspektasyon o sa iyong kaalaman mula rito. Iminungkahin ni Boysot ang mga sumusunod na dalawang key points. Una, data becomes more diffusible when it is readily organized and transformed into information. Ang keyword natin dito ay diffusion o diffuse na ang ibig sabihin ay to spread out o ikalat. Pangalawa, the less organized data needs a common context, the more diffusible it becomes. Ang keywords naman natin dito ay common context na ang ibig sabihin ay ang environment or setting in which something, whether words or events, exist. Sinasabi lamang dito ni Boysot na ang na madali daw maikalat at maitransform ang data into information kapag ito ay readily organized at my common context. Ang Boysat's model ay maaring ma-visualize bilang isang three-dimensional cube na may mga kaukulang dimensions. Una, from uncodified to codified. Pangalawa, from concrete to abstract. At pangatlo, from undiffused to diffused. Narito naman ang kanyang diagram. Narito naman ang tinatawag na social learning cycle o SLC na prinopose ni Boysot na gumagamit ng iSpace para i-model ang dynamic flow ng knowledge through series of six phases ang scanning, problem solving, abstracting, diffusing, absorbing, at ang panghuli, ang impacting. Scanning Scanning patterns such as uh, unique or distinctive insights that then become the possession of individuals or small groups. Scanning may be very rapid when the data is well codified and abstract, and very slow and random when the data is uncodified and context-specific. Kumbaga, insights are given from generally available, diffuse data. Problem solving. In this phase, they are given a definite shape and much of the uncertainty initially um, associated with them is eliminated. Problem solving initiated in the uncodified region of the ice space of often both risk, risky and conflict-laden. So problem solving, problems are solved 
giving structure and coherence to these insights, ibig sabihin knowledge becomes codified. Abstraction. Abstraction involves generalizing the application of newly codified insights to a wider range of situations. It involves reducing them to their most essential features, that is, conceptualizing them. Sinasabing ang problem solving at abstraction often works in tandem. At ang newly codified insights are generalized to a wide range of situations. Kumbaga, knowledge becomes more abstract. Diffusion. The diffusion of well-codified and abstract content to a large population will be technically less problematic than that of content that is uncodified and context-specific. Only a sharing of context by sender and receiver can speed up the diffusion of uncodified data. The new insights are shared with the target population in a codified and abstract form. Ibig sabihin, sa diffusion, knowledge becomes diffuse. Absorption. Applying the new codified insights to different situations in a learning by doing or a learning by using fashion. Over time, such codified insights come to acquire a penumbra of uncodified knowledge which helps to guide their application in particular circumstances. So absorption, the newly codified insights are applied to a variety of situations producing new learning experiences. Kumbaga, knowledge is absorbed and, produce, uh, and produces learned behavior and so becomes uncodified or tacit. Impacting. The embedding of abstract knowledge in concrete practices, the embedding can take place in artifacts, technical or organizational rules, or behavioral practices. Absorption and impact often work in tandem. So, impacting naman, um, abstract knowledge becomes embedded in concrete practices. For example, among artifacts, rules, or behavior patterns, kumbaga knowledge becomes Concrete. Narito naman ang isang um, maikling video ni Max Boisot um, explaining about his Boisot iSpace KM model through his three-dimensional cube. The iSpace relates the extent to which you can structure knowledge to the extent to which you can share it. So the three axes are codification, abstraction, and diffusion. So you can think of codification as the ability to distinguish between categories. Then you can think about abstraction as saying, well, how many categories do you need? So abstraction is a process of eliminating the distinctions and treating things that you would normally think of as different as if they were the same. Codification and abstraction are opposite tendencies. One is about how do I articulate differences and the other one is how do I eliminate them. Now those two work in tandem. And if I can work them in tandem, I will increase the degree of structure of my knowledge base. And that, that affects its diffusibility. That ultimately can be framed in dynamic terms. You create different kinds of information environment as you either structure or unstructured knowledge. For example, highly structured knowledge that can be instantaneously diffused look very much like a price system and therefore a market process. At the other extreme, you've got knowledge that maybe a Nobel Prize winner has. Uh, a lot of it is in his head, a lot of it is tacit, it's an accumulated experience. And that a lot of that is not going to be readily articulable and therefore not shareable. These different cultural structures uh, to some extent reflect the information environment made possible by the critical knowledge and the way it flows. If you look at this dynamically, you end up with a learning model, which is knowledge goes through these, think of them as phase spaces, they go through different or phase transitions from one kind of environment to the other. Um, and when that happens, the question then becomes, well, are the learning process and the cultural process well aligned? And if they are, you're going to get something productive. And if they're not, you're going to have problems. 
So the Boys at iSpace KM model can map and manage an organization's knowledge assets as a social learning cycle, um, which other KM models do not directly address. Sa kabilang banda, ang Boys at model ay uh, less well known at accessible, kaya naman hindi ito masyadong nagagamit sa uh, ng karamihan sa mga organisasyon. Hi, I'm Christine and I will be discussing the next KM model. The Intelligent Complex Adoptive Systems or ICAS KM theory. So, sinasabi na this theory sees the organization as an intelligent complex adoptive. So, for us to understand it better, i-define muna natin yung mga ginamit na words. First is complex. It means consisting of many different and connected parts. So, sinasabi na yung complex ay maraming components, maraming parts, and those components and parts ay magkakakonektado. Naapektohan nila or may impact sila sa isa't isa. For example, there is an issue in this one component. So, other components won't work well kasi konektado sila at apektado sila doon sa component na may issue. Next word is adoptive means characterized by or given to adaptation. Also means something is capable of, suited to, or contributing to adaptation. From the word itself, nag-a-adapt or ina-adapt yung ibang factors within its environment. And just like what I've said earlier, Organizations are seen as an intelligent complex adaptive system. It's like organizations are programmed to do what they need to do to maintain their business. Inside an organization with a complex adaptive system, merong mga individual and independent agents. And yung mga agents na yon ay nagko-communicate or nag interact within one another so they can figure out how their organization should run. For example, within the organization, may lumabas na problema. And that, probla- that problem is hindi lang iisang component ang naapektohan, pati na rin yung ibang component, or the whole organization itself. So para ma-maintain yung business, the individual agents will assess the components and fix what was affecting the organization. And according to Dr. Sharon Harsh, sinasabi rin na complex adaptive system theory can affect the organization in a positive way. Because just like what I've said, the organization is able to assess the system and identify even the smallest issue from a component. So kung may mga changes, it can be identified by the other agents. And pwede nila itong ma-adopt to lead a better change or improvement. And also to promote a better long-term sustainability for the organizations. And in terms of knowledge management naman, we have here the ICAS KM models major processes. First is the understanding. In this stage, dito nangyayari yung pag-a-assess ng bawat components, parts, or whole organization. This is to be able to identify kung ano yung problema or kung saan component nagsisimula yung problema. Next naman is creating new ideas to improve the organization. If may mga better suggestions or other new innovative projects for the betterment of the organization. And the next one is process of solving the problem. Once may identify yung problem, then do na rin create ng mga possible solutions para ma-stop yung problem and ma-maintain yung kaayusan ng organisasyon. And in making decisions naman is yung pag-e-evaluate na ng mga solutions, kung ano yung pinaka-the best na dapat gawin. In this stage, pina-finalize kung ano yung i-implement na solution. And in the last stage is of course, dito na gumagawa ng action. Ito na yung pag-i-implement ng solution para ma-achieve yung desired results. And since yung mga individual agents or yung mga tao ang gumagawa ng choices and actions, ICASKM theory also focuses on the individual knowledge workers' skill, ability, and learning. Kasi these are used to share others' knowledge, expertise, and insights over numerous networks. And according to this concept, merong 8 emerging traits that a company must have to compete and survive. So first is the organizational intelligence. This helps the company to produce and perceive relevant knowledge na makakatulong sa pag-improve ng business. You should be knowledgeable about the company to be able to generate knowledge and use it strategically. 
Next is shared purpose. So, syempre, para mas ma-achieve yung goal ng organization, dapat all employees share the same purpose or naka-align sa iisang mission lang. Kasi kahit gaano ka-motivated and productive ang organization, if magkakaiba ang purpose, hindi rin ma-achieve yung company goals. And third is selectivity. Dapat marunong na pumili, mag-assess kung ano yung right and useful resources, data, information, and more na dapat i-adopt ng company. Fourth is optimum complexity. As I've mentioned earlier, the organization should be able to identify the changes and use it to the organization's advantages. Kasi as the environment changes, dapat the company should be able to adopt to these changes para makasurvive. Fifth is permeable boundaries. So though may boundaries, dapat the company is still able to acquire the information, knowledge, resources, and people from outside the boundaries. This will help the company to explore influences na posibleng nakatulong or nakahadlang sa mga changes and outcomes. Next is being a knowledge-centric company. So this will help the organization to advance their goals kasi nakafocus sila sa knowledge. They create a culture of learning. They gather data and information from different sources to generate knowledge. Next is flow. A company can survive if it's following a flow or a continuous process. Kasi having a flow allows the business to know the steps from start to finish to achieve the goals and objectives. It is important to make sure that everything is going according to the plan. And last is multidimensionality. In order to accomplish the objectives, maraming factors ang dapat na i-consider. And being a multidimensional organization helps the company to take an action simultaneously through different dimensions that focuses on their respective aspects. So, yung mga emerging traits na to ay from the organization's nature. And managers can only nurture, coach, and assist. And yung mga traits na to are the skills, abilities, and learnings of the organization para makagawa ng mga choices, decisions, and actions for the improvement of the company. And next is the ICAS model that explains corporate knowledge management in four ways. Creativity, problem solving, decision making, and implementation. So this is just like the ICAS KM model major process wherein they create new ideas, views, concepts, and approaches na nakakatulong sa pag-improve ng organization pag ng problems, and pag-construct ng mga goods and services. And next is the problem solving, wherein they provide different solutions or approaches para ma-solve yung problem. And in the decision making is yung pag-finalize ng best solution na i-implement sa huli to achieve the desired outcomes. And that is the Intelligent Complex Adoptive Systems or ICAS KM Theory. We hope you learned something from our video. Thank you for watching.